Welcome into the first ever episode of the Star Gazing Podcast. My name is Stephen Holstein. To my right is Isaiah Killinger. Straight up. And to my left is Nick Pratched. Hey. Our producer, of course. We uh, This is not our first time on UCM The Beat. We have tried to do a radio show for the first couple weeks. It was called Star Gazing Radio. And in that, we did uh, segments about hip-hop news and things with some music mixed in there. Yeah. But, um, you know, we just decided we have a lot to say. And the music part of it was more work than we anticipated. Yeah, we've got more to say than we have to play. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> so uh, we are going to do the podcast format for mm-hmm. Drawn Out on the Beat. And we're excited about it, and we hope you are too. Yeah, we, I think we uh, are coming up with ideas during some rehearsals in order to uh, make this as you know as entertaining, as engaging, thought-provoking, even maybe, right. as we can, rather than just trying to censor a bunch of songs that, you know, honestly didn't the results that we were getting weren't worth the work that we we're putting in yeah so. so just with the podcasting format you know we think we've already seen more interaction on uh social media and things just yeah. like more excitement about it sure and it's just something i um i think we're just more passionate about doing so uh you know without further ado let's get into the show yeah let's get started so uh during rehearsal this week uh, isaiah and i were bouncing ideas off of each other and we came up with this interesting idea we thought would be good for the show. And um, so Isaiah was telling us about who his Mount Rushmore of rap would be, or of hip-hop. Yeah. And instead of saying Mount Rushmore, he said Mount Olympus. Yeah. Like, like the Greek gods. So that got us thinking, who's the Mount Olympus of hip-hop? Yeah, who fills, who fills the, Greek, like the Greek gods up of everyone in hip-hop? I didn't say that right, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> who fills them up? Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> like, who could take those slots in hip hop? Yeah. Who, like, so we thought about, we, we, we like confirm some things, but we're going to talk about it a little more. Yeah, we, didn't, we have we didn't, not, we didn't, yeah, we we have haven't not talked about this with each other. We haven't scratched the surface yet. So here we go. Without further ado, it's the Mount Olympus of hip hop. Okay. So we have to start, we have to start. With the big three, right? Zeus, Hades, Poseidon. Mm-hmm. Who is Zeus? Kanye. Kanye. It has to be Kanye because Kanye is the biggest name in hip hop. I think ever. Uh, culturally, yes. And he's yeah. It's, yeah, Kanye, it's Kanye has the most like as much as like you know as he's acting crazy right now but but you know like it's not like the gods and like the gods in greek mythology were per like yeah of course not absolutely flawed yeah I and mean, kanye's always been controversial but you know mm-hmm. kanye is the most influential figure in hip-hop and he has what six classic albums uh to me bro like almost every album is a classic one in some in some fashion because every album he drops changes the landscape of music like when he dropped yeezus mm-hmm. it set the tone for what you know, XXX and Tassian and all those people are doing now. Right. And then he dropped Pablo, and now it's a bunch of, like, playlist-style albums, like, streaming-only albums. Yeah. And then with Ye, I think albums... Well, I don't know, because I thought... It seems like albums are getting longer because of the uh, yeah, streaming cheat. Just, just like, yeah, because you can rack up more. Numbers. But I thought what he was doing with Ye, regardless of whether or not... I like the album. I do like the album. But, like, it's a short album, and because it's a short album, it's going to get more plays per song. That's true. Uh, yeah, they, he did that with the Push T album, with Ye, with Kitsy Ghost. Every album was seven songs. Tiana Taylor yeah. and Nas, yeah. So All those are seven songs. Yeah, so, yeah, I, could, I was worried that that was going to start a trend. You, you were worried about it? Yeah, that we were just going to get seven song albums from a lot of people, so... I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind. You know, Kanye's been such a big influencer, and you know, not just musically, and just in fashion and in culture. And so, you know, it's. <laughs> I think it's a natural worry. You know, when he drops five seven track albums in a month. Yeah. You know, and then thinking that's not going to catch on, but that's the thing that makes Kanye Zeus to me is like he is on top, and he's been on top for ten years. Uh, Kanye's been uh, on top for ten years at least. That's crazy. Like like technically 10 like he took he took the throne from 50 cent and when he dropped graduation yes. yeah and he hasn't left so that's been 11 years i got those two and seven mm-hmm. so about yeah kanye's got to be zeus i don't think that one has to be debated so much no it shouldn't be not not to me i guess okay so this one is more so 
it's more so assigning a rapper to a god. Yeah. Not like saying this god has to be this rapper. Mm -hmm. But if we're talking the big three, again, regardless of like whether or not you like the music or like him, right? It's Eminem has to be in the big three because of the b barriers he's broken in terms of whiteness being accepted in hip hop, right. which you know shouldn't be a big deal, but it was yeah, because he wasn't like the first one to do that, but mm -hmm. he like was the most successful rapper for and in some regards still is like one of the most successful rappers ever and yeah. artists and his style is just you know it was groundbreaking in a way it was the first it was the first like horrorcore horrorcore vulgar gritty style to like get into the mainstream yeah, yeah. And really latch on so yeah so that would make him an M Hades right probably it, i mean he can't be poseidon but like because Eminem, eminem's like all dark not everything he does is dark but what he's known for and what he's I, in my opinion probably best at is like the dark tongue-in-cheek like like he was kind of given this uh okay so who he, it's like who he inspires like who he inspires right. is like hobson tyler uh who else earl and when, when they all started they were all like, you know, Tyler, the creator, was like, kill people, burn stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of that abrasive stuff. Yeah, just very anti-everything, mm -hmm. like, life sucks. Uh, just playing up this, these characters that are just, I mean, to put it lightly, criminals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I can see that. So Eminem's got to be Hades, Kanye's got to be Zeus. Now, here comes the fun one. Who's Those Poseidon? Now, Poseidon's known for, like, staying in the ocean, like, hiding under a rock. Like, he doesn't go to Mount Olympus, but he's part of the, like, the gods that go there. Yeah, yeah. So, and he's also part of the big three. To me, that's Kendrick Lamar. Oh, so you did, so you did decide it was Kendrick. I decided it was Kendrick? You you said, when we were brainstorming, you said Ken, not Kendrick yet. Because to me, it's Jay-Z. It can't be Jay Z. Jay Z not? doesn't personify Poseidon, but he's bigger, and he's had more of an influence. Jay Z made title. Jay Z did make title. He's an investor in title. Yeah. But no, because Jay Z can't be Poseidon because Jay Z's visible, and Jay Z's like Kendrick Lamar isn't visible. Kendrick Lamar is a lot more low key. No, Do you know not. what he's doing right now? Do you know what Jay Z's doing right now? Yeah, he's running businesses. And selling shoes. Kendrick Lamar's making. Kendrick Lamar just Kendrick, finished. Jay Z just became like the vice president of Puma. Okay, of Kendrick, Lamar just, operation. Kendrick Lamar just finished the damn tour. So he's he went on music. tour. That's all he did. What does Kendrick Lamar do outside of music? He made the Black Panther soundtrack, which is music, that's but that's music, but that's still movies. He's doing. He's releasing his shoe with Reebok soon. Yeah, dude. But Kendrick Lamar is mysterious. No, he's not. I don't know what he does every day. He's not in the tabloids. No. Yeah, he's mysterious. I don't think Poseidon's like that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's not mysterious, but he like keeps to himself. You know, I don't think Kendrick's been around long enough to be in the big three. I think I think he has, because he has to me. Okay, Good Kid, Mad City is a classic, right? How so? Because it's just great. I think that's a great album. You know, it's the it's the storybook from you know from the. It's just kind of like a day in the life. I don't know. I give I I'll give albums ten years before I call them classics. Ten years? Yeah. To say if they stand the test of time. I was listening to it the other day and I hadn't listened to it in a long time and I was like, okay, this is Good Kid, Mad City was like an instant classic. I and think. The, I think I think Good Kid, Mad City started the whole debate over whether some, like how fast something can be a classic. Yeah. Which in which in turn like makes it a classic. Yes. Good Kid Matt. That's, that's like an a, argument I usually have. And that's it. accepted. Good Kid Matt City is legendary. It always will be. And then Tabemba Butterfly is. Yeah, it's the greatest hip hop album of the maybe 21st century. Okay. It's up there with. So what else fantasy. do you have to do? What else does he have to do? Long and, then he dropped, and then he dropped Damn. Yeah. Then he dropped Damn, which, you know, is is it on par with the first two? Probably not. But, man, Damn I is think good. It is. You think it is? Yeah. It's my second favorite album, Kendrick album. It's conceptually, it's conceptually different. Yeah, but you know, like, how many albums does Tupac have? A ton. Tupac had like 
Tupac has had like twenty something. How much of that is like quality stuff? How am I, how could that be like a lot of quality stuff in your diet twenty six? How old's Kendrick Lamar? Thirty something. So four years ago he was twenty six, right? Yeah. What came out four years ago? Good. Or over four years ago? Good kid, Mad City. Okay. Okay. So you're saying that he can't make other quality stuff? And, no, and, and I'm we're saying. Gonna, I'm saying oh, 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 by the way, by the way, you brought up Tupac. Like, we're gonna omit like some things like that because Tupac didn't really have time. Like, I think it's. Yeah, but that's what you're using that as an argument, though. Tupac had a lot of material, but like, it's not like it was all classics because it couldn't have been. You can't release stuff that fast, and it's all like that good. There's no way. Why not? So like, Tupac can't be on. How this. can it be? Because it wasn't, and it's not. Have you heard it? I've heard a lot of it. You've heard a lot of the twenty albums. I've heard quite a bit of Tupac. I've heard all. Of I it. just don't think I like Tupac as much as everyone else. You I don't. Think, you know, I mean, that's not your steez. You don't like. You don't like listen to Tupac or Biggie and stuff. I mean, I do, but I mean, that's just me. That's not me trying to. So blame. are they? So they take that third spot. Are they in that consideration for you? No, I can't. I can't do that. Why? Because I wasn't around. You know, I was never actually aware. Like I saw, like I was like, I was watching a video on YouTube and there were these people debating and they said, if Tupac didn't die at 26, he would be bigger than Will Smith right now. Is that true? It could be because he was moving into acting Uh and he was like, and like Tupac was supposed to be like Mace Windu. Uh, He was, he was supposed to play uh, Bubba and Forrest Gump. Was he really? Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that Tupac was involved in that just didn't happen because it couldn't have, you know? So, like, maybe Tupac is Poseidon and your metaphor for uh, your uh, whole reasoning that Kendrick is because he's out of the tabloids could be this because he's dead. Because he, he never had a chance. But I'm going to say, I'm still going to say Jay-Z because of his influence on Kendrick Lamar and his influence on rap from uh, like more so than like 75% of the earth is the ocean, right? Yeah. And that's what Poseidon does. Yeah. That's Jay-Z because Jay-Z is dipping his toe in everything from a business standpoint. He's bigger than hip hop. Oh, of course. Yeah. Kendrick Lamar. So is Kanye. Yeah. So is Kanye. So is Eminem. Kendrick Lamar is barely bigger than hip hop. I don't know. Because Kendrick Lamar is the most popular rapper. Kendrick Lamar is the most popular rapper in T- the world. Today. Yeah. He's in, the, he's in, you know, he's in every top 10 list you're ever going to read. You know? Maybe. So, I don't know. I can see your point. Yeah. I see your point for sure. Yeah. But I but to me it's still like Jay Z. You know, if we're picking rappers that personify the character, then I think Henry Moore makes most sense. I'm talking big three just taking a spot. Yeah. Okay. So it's just different sides of the coin then. Okay. All right. All right. Any other ideas? For Poseidon? No, just for like gods and rappers. Well well I mean like we're gonna talk about popularity. Well, just anything. Like no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I know. Like there could be a third name thrown in the Poseidon discussion. Oh, that's what you want to do? Yeah, Drake. Like, okay, okay, yeah, but, but I don't. But Drake <laughs> is like pop to me. Yeah, I don't know if you can put. I don't. I think it's. I don't think it's fair to Drake to put him in the hip hop category. That boxes Drake in. Do you think Drake? This no Drake like. Drake, uh, like, labels himself as a rapper. Well, yeah. He he makes diss tracks. He had the whole thing with Pusha T. Pop stars don't do that. Rock stars don't do that. I don't think. But what? It, but you know that? Like, is that? You know, I can call myself a tree, but. <laughs> That's not <laughs> that's, a that's, bad, that's a bad that's a bad I'm example. Not finish that one. Yeah, because <laughs> I know you're because there's no argument that can be made that you're a tree. <laughs> you don't make tree music. <laughs> <laughs> Drake, 
Drake makes rap. My analogy there was going to be really bad. Yeah, it was. It. You you I saved know. yourself. I think I might tell Isaiah what it was off the air. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, like, Drake's I – th- I consider Drake a rapper because Drake considers himself a rapper. And, I mean, that doesn't mean that you are something just because you want to be it. But, to me, he also exhibits traits of a rapper. Despite his whole ghostwriting thing, like, he still raps. And as much as I don't like that, I don't like that he doesn't write everything. Mm-hmm. I do. I know that he does write because, like, he he himself r- wrote for Kanye. And, yeah, we put Kanye in there. So, like, you don't need to write your own shit, I guess, for this to be relevant. So, well, yeah, if you're going to go popularity, I guess it has to be Drake or Jay-Z. And then Kendrick Lamar is, like, a comfortable third. Yeah. If you're going to go with that. Right now. Yeah. I it's, think in time, well, in, in time, I'll give it to Kendrick because I well I like him more than both of those artists like act like yeah it makes better music tons more like I well he doesn't better music says subjective term but subjective sorry but um no I think he makes the most thought provoking music and the most like timeless stuff yeah so well maybe we don't know because yeah it's not we're not there yet there hasn't been time passed you know yeah that's true that was what I was saying because Jay Z. Jay Z has been making, Jay Z been rapping since. Like but when 99. you show your kids what hip hop is, you know, kind of like how our parents show us. Like, if I show my kids what hip hop no. is, I'm not playing to pimp a butterfly. I'm playing, like, honestly. I'll say this is what hip hop is. This is what hip hop could be. So I'll say this is what hip hop is. I'll play, like Jay Z's Blueprint, Reasonable Doubt, Black Album, uh, American Gangster, yeah. 444. I'm saying this is what hip hop could be i'm playing to pimp a butterfly good kid met city damn makes kendrick Mar that better is he that much better to you than jay-z yeah he's a better to me that's to me though because i think i think what jay-z who jay-z speaks to you know is where he comes from yeah he tells his story and a lot of people a lot of people that he that listen to him can relate to that like Jay Z's main audience, I've noticed, is not white. Of all these popular albums we're talking about, mm-hmm. Kendrick Lamar, Drake, their main like Drake's main thing is white people. Yeah, Kendrick's main is suburban white people. To me, that's what I've gathered. Really? Yeah. I mean, I mean, friends like that I have, like they say the hood, like they like him. But they're not playing to pimp a butterfly, you know. They're oh, playing, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're playing like humble and Kodak Black. And oh, that's what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, not specifically Kendrick songs, but like, yeah, they'll play humble or swimming pools. Or, or swimming or pools, yeah. But they're not gonna play like deep cuts. Oh yeah, of course not. But Jay Z is bigger than that because I'll listen to Jay Z, and so will. Someone living in East St. Louis, South Chicago, South KC. So you don't think those people listen to Kendrick Lamar? They do, but do they relate to Damn and to Pimp a Butterfly? How would they not relate to the Pimp a Butterfly? Because that's a story about fame and how fame is taking him out of that environment and then him, like, being lost in it and then revisiting it towards the end of the album because in wesley's theory he he gets signed right in wesley's mm-hmm. theory right then in for free he's talking about everything he's getting institutionalized is him bringing his friends from like the ghetto to uh an award show mm-hmm. and how they're like plotting on stealing like watches and stuff like it's the what am i supposed to do when i'm looking at walking licks they're something and money talks about the mention of foreign whips like right. they just want all they're worried about is like well all these people here got a lot of money and they're not gonna care if something goes missing right maybe i don't know but like and as the album goes along he starts realizing that uh 
what he's doing isn't helping the situation that he comes from. You know what I mean? Makes sense. It makes sense, you know, but I don't, I guess, and Depend Butterfly is not really like bumping your car music either. No, I mean, it's got some stuff. Yeah, but like, you know, Kendrick Lamar doesn't really make music that like people just casually turn on. I think Damn was the first album he made that was more like that. Well, the thing was, the thing about Good Kid Mad City is that it wasn't that, but it was disguised as that. Like backseat freestyle, swimming pools. Backseat freestyle, I mean, it is. It's just a song like where him and his homies are BSing in a car ride. But Swimming Pools is a song about how alcoholism, like, is inherited and can take over people. But it's disguised as, like, like, a party song. like let's turn up. Right. Don't Kill My Vibe is, like, you know, yeah. the same thing. You know, but you know, but what you're saying, I guess what we're, how we're relating all this back is, you know, Jay-Z makes. Jay-Z he, made. Um, Jay-Z just makes stuff you can play. Jay-Z made yeah. Big Pimp in. He made 99 problems. Yeah. You don't really have to think about that. Yeah. I get it. I get what you're saying. Jay-Z is my, Jay-Z is my Poseidon. Where's Kendrick not, Lamar will be. Where he's not including Drake. I in think. This. Drake is not. Drake, I don't, yeah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Uh, so, we got those three. Okay, so we're going to go to some deep cuts. <laughs> Did you look into some? Yeah, I looked at a few. Who did you okay, who did you look at? Um, who did we agree Hercules was? Travis Scott. Because that's like Zeus's favorite son. Yeah, even though that's not a god, but that's like part of the mythology. Yeah, he's a myth- he's a Greek mythology. Like Travis Scott is Hercules. Yeah, if you guys were expecting us to like go down the list of the Greek gods and like match them with people, that's not what we're doing here. I mean we're I just, can. Right, Isaiah kind of did it. Isaiah kinda did that, but this is more like <laughs> it's, it's a little touch it's a little scratch the surface. Like yeah. Travis Scott is Hercules because I mean Travis Scott isn't Kanye's favorite like influence because right now I think that's probably Chance. Yeah, but Travis Scott is the most successful. Oh, by far, by far he's like the next Kanye. You know, as far as his ability to like curate, you know, albums, just yeah. like getting people on them. Yeah, like he's the glue, as he says. Yeah. So yeah, Travis Scott is Hercules just because he's like the next. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, okay. Your turn. My turn. <laughs> Aries, the god of war. Uh huh. Who are some Who are some rappers that come to your mind when I say that? The God of War. Yeah. Hmm. So like, what? That'd be like aggressiveness. Yeah, sure. But Aries wasn't well liked, right? Um, that doesn't. I mean, we don't have to be like too specific, cause like, there's like there's a goddess that like Iris um had things like she like transported people from and to Mount Olympus, you know? Right. Like, who does that in hip-hop, you know? Yeah, who's the bus just, <laughs> Yeah, it's just like... um, Yeah, so who's like the, the most... The God of War... Well, like, that makes me want to say Joe Budden. Really? Just because he's controversial. And he just says stuff, but that's not really rapping, though. That's more of his podcast. That's his podcast? <sighs> he's a figure in rap? Yeah. Yeah, so does that count? I don't know. Because my Are pick we... is Ice Cube. That's a good pick, yeah. From the... No- yeah. That's good. Because I think Joe Budden's just like the ice cube character in the culture right now. Maybe. You know, just because Maybe. he's the one just to me, because he's not the one to like he's not the one, you know, or he is the one who's not afraid to speak his mind. That's true. You know what I'm saying? But Ice Cube, every single song that Ice Cube has mm-hmm. is in your face. Even like like today was a good day. Yeah. He's still rapping like today was a good day. Like it's like you feel it, you're like Okay, it's a, yeah. Like, all right, dude, chill. Last court, <laughs> last time messed around and got a triple double. Like, I believe you, bro. <laughs> it's like his voice. His voice just carries like this impact. So he's my Aries. That works. Yeah, that works. Okay. So then we have what? Hera. Uh, I'm gonna say okay. Well, you can go. My bad. No, you have your list. Go ahead. Okay, Hera. She's the wife of Zeus, but she's like the goddess of like of families and mothers and stuff okay who, who? so that's not kim no it can't be but it's beyonce right yeah, yeah. that's what i had it's beyonce. it's beyonce she's not like hip-hop but like i guess it fits it yeah. fits the most i can't think of anyone else like maybe erica badu but but she's also but 
that kind of came to mind because she has literal families with like <laughs> J- <laughs> like Jay Leck and uh, Andre Three Thousand. Yeah. Uh, no, it's gotta be Beyonce. Okay. Um, Apollo. I struggled with this one because Apollo represents a lot of different things. Yeah, he's like. But Apollo's main thing is he represents youth. Yeah, youth, youth and, and the like, sun. Yeah, youth like the sun, and he's like the cool guy. Like guys, I'm Apollo. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, um, yeah. So he's like that cool uncle you only see on Thanksgiving. You know. You think that's what he is? Yeah. That's okay. What, that's so like that's like the the like picture I paint when I think of Apollo. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So who would that? So who would that be to you? <sighs> the first thing I want to say is Chance the Rapper. But that's just me going on the positive vibe thing. Really? Yeah. But that, like I said, that's just me going on the positive. There's obviously a lot more there. And Chance the Rapper's probably not that big. No. I, so, I don't know. What's yours? I had two I had two that came to mind, but I ended up choosing one because we're yeah. talking about God status. Yeah. I had ASAP Rocky, <sighs> but he's not God status. No. My other one is Lil Wayne. Do you think he carries... Does Lil Wayne carry a youthful demeanor still? The youth... Fuck with Lil Wayne. Yeah, but is he youthful? Like, did you see his hair? Have you that seen his hair? Matter. <laughs> that doesn't matter. His music is youthful. It he is. Has, and it's has like energetic X- and happy. Yeah, he has XXX and Tassion on the second song of his newest album. Yeah. That he's been in production for like four years. Yeah. No. Yeah. He's, al- he's always been in like touch and he did the whole rock star thing. Like, when Lil Wayne is there, you know Lil Wayne's there. Yeah. No. Yeah, he, that's he, a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. I like that. Lil Wayne as Apollo. Okay. Okay. Um, Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty. Rihanna. Nicki Minaj. No. Because, yes. No. Because, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Because I'm going to bring up two. I'm going to bring up, uh, okay, so Aphrodite and Artemis. Okay. Artemis is Apollo's twin sister, but yep. I don't care about that. Aphrodite is the goddess of beauty. Artemis is like hunting and is more like I don't need men. You know? I view Rihanna as more of an Artemis because Nicki Minaj, her whole appeal yeah. are her boobs and her butt. Like that's like what she uses to market herself. Like actually in every video. She made that one song, what was it? Anaconda. The Anic Yeah. <laughs> Her album covers are like suggestive, like that too. I guess. Yeah, she gets and she gets that from Lil Kim. So you could say Lil Kim, but like, at this point, Nicki Minaj is bigger, so she's oh, gonna be like, huh? Yeah. So, what do you, what do you think? That makes sense. So Rihanna's so go to Rihanna's Artemis. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. To me, Rihanna's Artemis because there's a myth, or there's like a, a fable in the myth. The myth is that, or the fable is that. There, uh, one day Artemis was bathing, and a man was trying to like peep, and she caught him and sent her huntresses after him. And that seems like a very like Rihanna thing to do. I don't know. That's just the (laughs) the vibe I get is like I don't need men. Yeah, she seems very independent. Like I'll you like if I ever feel like it. Yeah, sure. But like. You know, like, he's probably not going through. <laughs> but, you know, like, the whole thing with, like, you remember the, remember the Drake thing where, like, he was, like, he thought that his relationship with Rihanna was more than what she thought it was with him? Is that what it was? That's what I got from him, I mm-hmm. guess. But, like, yeah, I think, I think, yes. I think Rihanna's Artemis. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think Rihanna's Artemis for that reason. Okay. What's what's what else? Okay. Um. What well, do you agree or no? I'll give it to you. You give it to me. Okay. <laughs> um. Hermes or Hermes, whatever. The messenger of the gods. The messenger. Yeah, he would go to and from Earth. To, well, not Earth, but like to and from Mount Olympus to the mainland or whatever, to exchange messages from the gods. So this is like to me this is like the connector. Is that do you have a rapper for that or is that like would that like be one of our roles like a hip hop show or a I have a rapper. Uh, as a messenger? Okay. 
I just have someone that every single person got along with and knew. Mm-hmm. And I feel like you might have an inkling of where I'm going with this. Someone that knew everybody and could connect everybody because he was the he was always the medium. He was always the messenger, the the guy, the middleman. You're gonna tell me, and I'm gonna be like, "Oh, it's Mac Miller." Okay. Mac Miller was he that big though? Does Mac Miller go on your Mount Olympus of hip hop? Mac Miller is my Hermes because Mac Miller is going to be forever remembered for his music and how much he was loved by everybody. But to me, Mac Miller was never big enough to be considered, you know, to be put on a Mount Olympus. Like everyone else we've said so far has like huge, right? But like Mac Miller was never big, man. Like it, is when, Hermes big? He's on the Mount Olympus. There's only 14 spots. Is Mac Miller in the top 14 to you? This isn't best rappers. Or the th- are you just so we're just, perso- just, we're just trying I'm to per- I'm personifying for this. I mean, that's a good one. When he died, there was a lot, you know, there was a lot like, of support. Bro, everybody had a picture with Mac Miller. Like yeah. Mac knew everyone. Not just on a musical level. Like like I was doing a whole th- like I was like uh listening to a thing like Anderson Pack and Mac Miller uh, only ever made one song. But they hung out so many times, like, in a studio, just hanging out. Mm-hmm. And, like, people meet people through Mac Miller. You know? Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Um, what, would you, uh, what would you think? I'm trying to think because I think you have to be big to do that, to be the messenger, to connect people. But he did that. Yeah. Like, everyone knows who Mac Miller is, regardless of whether or not his music's that big. Okay. Like, my parents know who Mac Miller was. All right. Yeah. You know, I wish I could, like, debate this more with you, but, like, yeah. I, I can agree with your points. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I want something you disagree with, like, you gotta find or, something, or something that we can, like, uh, discuss. Yeah. Okay. Athena is the goddess of wisdom and, like, architecture. Right, so that's got to be like an OG. You think so? Oh, it's got to be. But does it have to be female? I couldn't be anybody. I don't know, because mine's female, but she's not an OG. Who is it? Rhapsody. No. No? No, that doesn't work. Okay. It doesn't work. Okay. Like, no offense, but how many people know who it is? Like, you know, not to disrespect, like, those of you that do, but, like, is Rhapsody a thing? Like, a big thing? No. Of course not. She's the most. But she's like the you're most personifying things, but like there, you have to. Popularity has to be a part of those. Okay. You know, because okay. no one, no one's worshiping. But everyone, and, but okay, this isn't, and that's and that's a thing. Like everyone who raps, yeah, like rappers know who Rhapsody is. Like Kendrick, like Rhapsody was on to Pippa Butterfly. But she can't go on Mount Olympus because Mount Olympus is the like the top. Rhapsody is the best female rapper of all time. Like best. God of so wisdom. But who would you say? Like Erica Badu? No. Why not? Queen Latifah? Do you know your female hip hop artist that much? I'm not trying to like. I don't want to answer this question in a way that doesn't make sense. So I'm just thinking about it. Okay. You know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, gender aside, no, 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 no. Like gender aside, well, okay, gender aside, wisdom and architecture. If I'm if I'm putting if I, if I'm putting gender aside, to I, me, I the, might say to Dre. me the goddess or god of wisdom and architecture has to be a producer. You think so? To me, okay. Is that Dre? Dre's a good candidate for that. But that's what. But, but a name that comes to my mind is Mike Dean. Really? Yes. How many people know who Mike Dean is? But Mike Dean's a goat. How many and people? Mike know Dean's all but, over the place. But how many people know who Mike Dean is? <laughs> <laughs> but Mike Dean's all over the place. Mike Dean's Mike Dean goes on tour with Kanye. He goes on tour with Travis Scott. Okay. You know he's visible. Okay. <laughs> but how many people know who Mike Dean is, Steven? 
I do. I think more people know who Mike Dean is than Rhapsody. I don't. I would make that argument. I wouldn't. Mike Dean's a big deal, and he's an argument, you know. He's, like, every time he's on something, you know he's on something, and he puts a lot of, you know, stuff together. I would now, it'd be fair that he, like, works, like, almost more exclusively with good music artists. Yeah, because, yeah, that's where he's, yeah. yeah. That's where he's signed to, but, you know, that, to me, that's Mike Dean, because Mike Dean makes shit better. Or Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin would be a good example Rick of that. Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin over Mike Dean for yes. this. There we you go. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because did we just we just suddenly agreed? <laughs> that kind of sucks. Now we got there. Oh damn. Now we got no. Okay. Rick Rubin's a good one for that. Yeah, it's Rick Rubin because he's all over the place on everything, on everyone's stuff. You know. I think no, 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 no. I think this is Dr. Dre, but Hephaestus. Do you know who Hephaestus is? Uh-oh. He's like a, he's like Aphrodite's husband. Oh, okay. And but he is known. Regardless, like, he's, like, I'm not trying to say that these people are, like, ugly or whatever, but he's known for how ugly he is, and he, oh, he's like... he's got a fire, right? Yeah, 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 he, like, builds things. That's who I thought my producer, that's who I thought the producer was, and I was having a hard time, because I could have said, with this, I would have said either RZA, Dr. Dre, but, yeah, or, but I think that more so than anything, Rick Rubin would be Hephaestus. Yeah, because he's got the big scraggly beard. Like we're just really yeah. Like if we're time. like if we're really gonna yeah. do it, Rick Rubin's a festive. He's all over the place. He's on Rihanna stuff. He's on Kanye stuff. He's on Travis Scott stuff. He's on Kendrick stuff. He's on Katy Perry stuff. Katy you know? Perry stuff. He's just all over the Justin place. Justin Bieber. Yeah, he's just all over the place. He's like prolific. Mm-hmm. And he's like a genius. Yeah, like he's bigger than yeah. He's bigger than rap. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and like artists go to him like like and he was there from the beginning too. Yeah, like Def Jam is Rick Rubin. Yeah. He'll like walk in and say, you know, the artist will say, This sucks and he'll fix it, you know. Yeah. Like you read the story. So Yeah. Yeah, that's Rick Rubin. Yeah. Or so one or both. Okay. No, 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 not both. So Athena, if it to you is it still Mike Dean? If I'm because if I'm putting gender aside, it's Dre. That he's works. Been. That works. If we're gonna class it in that. You're right. Mike Dean's probably not big enough of a name, but like uh, just a producer who I like, you know. Like, we talk about produce, like, how you produce music. Yeah. So you're not, like, super impressed by, like, you know. Take Heath. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> take I'll Heath, say it. I don't care. Take Heath, if you're listening. You suck. You're not that good. You make very simple beats, but you know you have clout, and that's fine. Like, that's cool. I just don't I just don't like your beats, man. You don't suck. You made it. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but, like. No, just stay behind it. Don't say sorry. No, no, stay no. By, stand behind what you say. No, no, no. No, don't do I that. Got, I got caught up. Don't I'm, apologize. No, I don't got apologize. caught up. Don't apologize. You don't suck. Stand behind what you say. You cracked the key to simple yet effective. But still, I feel it's underproduced. But you got your you got your clout. You're getting you're getting the bre- You're getting the bag. I can't hate on you getting the bag. You're, you're backing off your hot take. No, I'm not. That's not a hot take. Oh, it's not a hot take. That he's, like a, he's, a, he's a very simple producer. <laughs> yeah, everything he produces is like five tracks. That's not a hot take. If you know what that means, I guess. <laughs> All right. But no, you said you're not fans of producers, you know, who did make simple beats like that. So who I feel I feel like I feel things are underproduced sometimes. Yeah. So that's why, you know, a good producer has to be high on the list for me. So. But you can still be a good producer and make something simple. Like, Mo Bamba is simple. Oh, yeah. Okay. But it's effective. Yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm moving on. <laughs> moving down the list, we have... What did you think about Hermes? Did you have anyone? Because we kind of moved on. You just didn't... You just, we just agreed about Mac Miller being Hermes? It works. Okay. It works. I we made points. Okay. This is someone I actually I wrote down like I think I think my my choice was bad so I'm not gonna say it now and I deleted it okay Dionysus you know who that is yeah that was the god of wine the god of wine and like partying uh-huh. who is that in hip hop the ultimate party rapper yeah is that Drake because while that's not his main function yeah people get lit to Drake yeah. But people also get let to like. I don't know. Yeah, no. Drake's probably like the safest bet. You think so? That. Yeah, because you can like throw a Drake. Like you can throw what? What's a Drake? Yeah, you throw like, God's plan on, and everyone knows it. Yeah, sure. You throw you know in my feelings. 
Yeah, I was Everybody trying. Knows to, that's on. Yeah, I just came up with that. I was trying to. Ugh. Yeah. Even his older cuts, like "Just Hold On," "We're Going Home," like everyone knows that song. That's a great song. Yeah. Drake, yeah, Drake, you're Dionysus. That's fine. Yeah, Drake's diabetes. I guess. Right. <laughs> I guess. Um, Is that he wrote down for that originally? Who I wrote down for that originally? Mm-hmm. No, I wrote Nas, and I don't know why. He's feeling it. Yeah, because <laughs> it's like God of Wine, and I'm like, oh, Nas is a very luxurious rapper. Well, so yeah. is Rick Ross, but like, they're but Rick Ross isn't a god to me. He's very consistent. He's yeah. a, he's a very consistently good rapper. He's not a god. Not 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 yet. He could be. I don't know. Maybe I'm sleeping on him. We don't have any singers on this list. Like, we don't have Abel or we have Beyonce. We don't need Abel. Yeah, we don't have Abel or Frank or like Chris Brown on this list anyway. Okay, they're godly. Yeah. Well, I don't like Chris Brown as much. No, fuck Chris Brown. Chris Brown doesn't make good music, bro. Really? Chris Brown makes pop. Is that a hot take? Is that another hot take? Fuck Chris Brown? If it is, then yeah. Okay, take Heath and Chris Brown. This is not the show for you. (laughs) It's not. (laughs) I don't care. You're not going to redeem yourself, bro. (laughs) You're still, you're stalking your ex, right? On Instagram? I don't know. Karuchi? Yeah, he's stalking her, so. Anyway, Frank needs to be in this list. Does he? To be comfortable with any kind of list I make about musicians, Frank Ocean needs to be on it. Okay. What do you think about? So where would he be? Who who would he be, bro? Oh, you want me? Okay. You have the list. I have a list. I've got Hypnos, the goddess, the god or goddess of like sleep, and like you know who that Daniel is? Caesar, Kid Cudi. Kid Cudi puts you to sleep. Kid Cudi puts me to sleep, not in a bad way. Okay. But like he like he like calm me down. He like he's like there for me, bro. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah. I forgot what it was. I forgot what it was. I'm gonna look it up actually. But I think Kid Cudi and Hypnos are very like similar. Yeah, like I'm gonna look these. I'm gonna look up these. Um, actually, thanks. Shout out Rick Rordan. This is where I'm getting them from. Is that how you pronounce it? That's how I've always said it. Is I've it Riordan? Riordan. Riordan? I don't know. Nick, bro. how do you say it? Rick Rordan. The the um, author of Percy Jackson's books. R I O R D A N. How would you say that? Are you coming through right now? Come through. Okay, come through. How would you say that? R I O R D A N. How would you say that? Okay. <laughs> We're not going to agree today. Okay. That, <laughs> I don't know. Riordan? I say Riordan. Anyway. Okay. Okay. I think okay, this is why I chose Kid Cudi. Okay. Hypnos could be good or bad in ancient times. He brought rest in dreams, but he could also sne- excuse me, sorry. He brought rest in dreams, but he could also sneak up on you and cause you to doze off at bad mo Damn <laughs> I'm burping. In bad moments. In his Roman form of Psalmist that God liked to make sentries fall asleep on duty, which was an automatic death sentence. Uh-huh. Or make ship navigators fall asleep at the wheel. Some this made me do it is not a good defense when trying to explain to your captain why you steered the Tyrarim off. And I guess and so that's a reference to his books. Anyway, the goddess of sleep, or the god, or whatever. You think that's Kate Cuddy? Someone who, because what I, because how I took, like, at bad times, like, I know a lot of people that have been, like, depressed. Yeah. Chose Kid Cuddy to, like, be there for them and i don't know if he made them feel better or if he just made them feel comfortable right but i kind of associated the good or bad with that that makes sense i was thinking of it in terms of just sleep but like if you look at it like in that like it like an artist who's just like <sighs> yeah that's yeah that's daniel caesar to me i can't listen to daniel caesar without getting bored and like dozing off without getting bored yeah Damn. It's just so, like, it's not, that's not an insult. You're not listening to the right songs, bro. No. Nah. It's just, like, it's not an insult towards him. It's just, like, it's, I know. it's very, like, pretty music, you know? I know, but I can listen to him and get, like, engaged. It's cool. I know what you're saying. To me, that's Kid Cudi. To me, Hypnos is Kid Cudi. Like, okay. For show, for show. Okay. Let me see. Uh, We have the, let's see. Uh, we should put gen- gender aside for this. Okay. Demeter is one of the quieter goddesses. 
As long as the crops were growing and the farmers were happy, Demeter was content. But don't underestimate her importance. If you wanted to eat, you had to make sure you kept on Demeter's good side. When Hades stole her daughter Persephone, Demeter stopped all plants from growing and people started starving. Hard to make a cheeseburger with no grain for bread and no grass for cows. So, agriculture. Okay, the goddess of agriculture. Who could that be? Or someone who... <laughs> someone, like, no, no, no. I know... Like, oh, like country rap star Michael Knight? N- <laughs> Have you ever That's heard? a... No. <laughs> we're not... I'm not going to entertain that. I've never... I've never heard of... Wh- what did he say? Michael Knight? Yeah, the country rap king. Never heard of that. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that because I honestly... I don't know anything about that. But like... Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a fun night. Screw country rap. <laughs> I like you, though, Yellow Wolf. Is he country rap? That's what he calls it. He's cool. Nelly calls himself that. So does Smino, but, like, whatever. No, I'm I like talking them. like. I know what you're talking I'm about. Like yeehaw. I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you're, yeah. yeah. That was whatever. Okay. But, but, like, when I think of that, I mean, like, when they're happy, hip-hop is happy. What do you, what do you, what are you, are you thinking or do you have like a, like just one, per, the first person that comes to your head? Uh, the first person that comes to my head, um, to me it's like Diddy, but I don't think that's like, I don't know. I think that's just a misunderstanding of what that is to I me. I think that might not be Suge Knight. Ooh, to me that's Kanye. When Kanye's happy, everyone's happy. When Kanye's mad, everyone's mad. Or just that everybody eats. Yeah, you know? Okay, but... When Kanye's, like, on, like, he produced five albums in a month. Like, Kanye's used, though. So. I know, but, like, that's who that is. Okay, so a supplier. A supplier? A supplier. Like, someone who, like, you can't make a burger without it. So I'm thinking maybe a producer... I'm thinking Young Thug. You really? <laughs> are you like? Are you serious? Or is that? A- yeah. Okay. Because Young Thug's really great on features. Okay, a feature. Okay. When Young Thug's on, he's the greatest rapper he's ever. He's on. He's yeah. the greatest rapper ever. But like his solo stuff's not great. But like when Young Thug does a feature, it's hard every time. Black Thought too. So like, if you get a good Young Thug feature, it's like, yeah, this is hard. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But. If you listen to Young Thug's solo albums, you're like, this sucks. No. I think I so. don't think that. I do. Young and his, Thug and his, is... And his, the streaming numbers back it up. Because Young Thug isn't no, solo. No, dude. That's that's not Young Thug's fault, though. You talk about how promos everything. No, because Young Thug... No, because Young Thug doesn't put a lot of work in his projects, I don't think. Because he releases stuff, like, really quick. Nah, bro. I don't think so. I don't think young he, I don't think his solo stuff hard. is, like, quality. Young Thug is hard. You know what? You know, what, you know what a Young Thug solo song is from a Young Thug solo project, Steven? I do. Check. That's a hard song. Okay. But he put that into an album. <laughs> That's an exception for me. Okay. Whatever. I, I think, I don't think of that as a feature. I think of that as a producer. And because of my time and because I already use Kanye, I'm going to say another popular producer, Metro Boomin. Okay. Metro Boomin wants some more. N word. That's how that goes. <laughs> and when Metro Boomin's happy, everybody eats. Everybody eats. Yeah, he would. dropped without warning. Uh-huh. He dropped the Nav thing. Mm-hmm. He dropped uh, him and Big Sean did a whole tape. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, bro. Wow, I already forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Big Sean's not a god. Sorry, Big Sean. You're cool, but. Yeah, you had the mercy verse, dude. Like, yeah, always, bro. you're always gonna be up there for that verse. I'm, I, I'm, and and IDF, W, Y. Yeah, that's a hard song. That's a cool song. But yeah, Metro Boomin, bro. When he's like, when Metro Boomin, like, he's like, is he, is he on a? No, it's not Metro Boomin. Sorry, okay. sorry, Metro. <laughs> I know it's STL, love, but you know what? Pharrell. There's a good one. It's Pharrell. Yeah, because he transcends hip hop too. Yeah, he transcends hip hop. For it's Pharrell. Yeah, Pharrell could be Dionysus, but we can't throw a Pharrell mm. song. But but 
anyway, okay, we already said that's Drake. Let's stick. Let's stick with uh, Demeter. Pharrell. I like that. Pharrell. I like that. It's Pharrell. I like that. Yeah. Pharrell produces for everybody. Yes. Pharrell did the whole Ariana Grande album. And you always know, except for like two. Like he has a very distinct production style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's also he also does the four count. Yeah. That's who. The goat tag. There we go. We got it. It's Pharrell. It's Pharrell. Pharrell's Demeter. Um, let's see. Who else do we have? How are we doing on time? All right, cool. I'm I'm cool with this. Yeah, we're doing good. Okay. Nike, the goddess of victory. So like the celebration rapper? Is that what that is? I think it's a rapper that wins. And not like not Jay. Really? Yeah, he's the richest. Cardi B. Explain. Okay. I'm I'm going to say this cuz of goddess. I'm going to choose I'm going to say this. Nike has the wings of an angel and rides a chariot. She usually has a golden laurel wreath handy to give to the winners of major battles, sports competitions at the state lottery. Nike was very popular since everybody wanted victory. Olympic athletes would sacrifice to her as would soldiers before a big battle. Nike would sometimes serve as a serve as Athena's charioteer in a battle. After all, the goddess of victory is pretty much the best wheel man you can ask for. That's P Diddy because he's a mobile. He's the biggest mobile, and yeah, he was a you know especially in the nineties too. Like Puff Daddy was hard, you know. And, and it's not our time. Like I know you have trouble with that because you say we like that wasn't our time. Yeah, dude, that's P Diddy. He's the provider, and he's the richest. He is a provider. He is the richest. And people care about his opinion. But you know what? He already he already won. Yeah. You know who's, you know who's currently winning and stays winning Cardi no matter B? what she does? Cardi B. Cardi B's just hot. Like, yeah. Cardi B is still around, though. That yeah. was too. That She's was just hot right now. You know? How long is right now? It's only, it has it been a year? Cardi B had the, has. What? Didn't she break a record for something? Like, she beat like a Nicki Minaj record, and Nicki got pissed. Nikki gets pissed at everything. Because of Cardi B. She got pissed at Travis Scott because of Cardi B. Yeah. How? No, it wasn't. Because she was mad about Cardi B and then she's just mad all like well, she's just mad about everything now. <laughs> That's that. That's it's not deeper than that. Is Cardi B a bigger deal than Nicki Minaj at this point? Yes. Like Did popularity, you? like with everything. Like what everything? was Nicki Minaj's album called? Queen? Okay, what was Cardi B's album called? I don't know. Invasion of Privacy. Okay, so oh, I didn't know that. I'm serious. Yeah, you didn't know that. But how many numbers did Queen do? Do you think like did Number you two. did you hear about it? Was, it was behind Astro World. Behind Astro World, the second week. You know what would have outsold Astro World? What? Invasion of Privacy. No. Yes, it would have. No, it wouldn't have. Yeah, would have. No. Yeah, would have. Mm-mm. Yes. No. Yeah. No. Cardi B is harder than Travis Scott. No. Yeah. No, he's n- no. Yes. No. Yeah. No, she's not. This is really intelligent. <laughs> Dude. No. Travis no, she's not. Dude, Travis Scott is bigger than that. Name a Travis Scott song harder than Kodak or a Bodak Yellow. You want me to make a freaking list right now? Okay. Maybe harder or more popular? I said hotter. Hotter? Bodak Yellow's not hot anymore. Oh, I forgot. I remember when I heard that Travis Scott song play when we went to the party. Parties. Oh, I don't Sicko remember. Sycamo tire. Sycamo is number three in the charts right now. Right now. What are you trying to suggest? No, Astro would have streamed better because it has bigger names on it. Because it was hyped up really well, it had a big push behind it. Not that Cardi B didn't, but Cardi B has what two loose songs that there were people like, yeah. They're playing, bro. They're playing Bodak Yellow at parties, and they're playing that uh, Drip song at parties. They're playing I like it like that. They're playing uh Okay, but they're playing Goosebumps at parties. They're playing Where? Eight. Where? What parties? Did they play Goosebumps at the party we went to? What party we went to? The one we, the one we went to. Where they played Mo Bamba once. Oh, that one? Yeah, or twice. But they cut it off the second time. I don't know. I don't remember it. I don't remember them playing that there. But I mean the Bro, so, they play like three Okay, so songs so a, a frat party in Central Missouri is like our barometer. Yeah, for who's hotter. Yep. No, Travis got his bigger numbers. I'll look it up. I'll okay, look. we're talking. We're gonna talk about who's hotter. 
it's what's getting to Central Missouri. Let's look it up. You know what I mean? I'm going to look it up. Nick, you know what I mean? It's get it's getting to Central Missouri. It's All not right. just okay. hot in certain regions. Travis Scott has 27 million monthly listeners on Spotify. Okay. At least Spotify, by the way, guys. Okay. Okay. Cardi B. Okay. Yeah. It's 29 million. Huh. All right. Okay. Did that settle it for you? It's you're comparable. Right? To, okay. So it's comparable. Are, it's comparable. It's comparable. I wasn't saying that like it was Cardi like, B does bleed into pop more. Yeah. She's got that Bruno Mar- the finesse song of Bruno Mars too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Finesse? That's a good song. You were talking about Bruno. Finesse. You were talking about hot. You were talking about hot. Bruno <laughs> Mars. <laughs> um, Dog. Yeah, Bruno Mars is goat. We got a song. I want to. We have. Was it 7 30? We got 30 minutes, like tops. Okay. Okay. Whatever. I'm still. I'm going to still go. This is. Okay. Janice. God of beginnings, choices, and doorways. Chance the Rapper. How so? The first independent artist to become a top hip-hop act. The first? Yeah. The biggest. Okay. The God of beginnings, choices, and doorways. He can do whatever he wants. Yeah, he had a pretty organic rise, too. Mm Mm-hmm. Like he you say what you want about the Apple deal. I listened to the Joe Budden podcast the other day. Uh, Chance was on it, and he explained like, I was I always said like, Chance isn't signed. Chance is independent. He signed to Apple. That's not what happened. Mm-hmm. Apple had his album exclusively for two weeks, gave him five hundred thousand for it. That's not like Apple doesn't own his music, right? That's just where it was. Yeah. Yeah. So Chance yeah. the Rapper is still independent and owns all of his music himself. That's smart. Like, that's the smartest way to do it. Because, like, no one can tell him what to do. Choices. Yeah. Okay. That's a good one. You don't argue that? You don't have anything? I don't think there's an argument for that. Damn. Okay. I want to be wrong sometimes because that makes it interesting. Yeah. Well, you. I mean, you thought this out pretty well. Kind of. I don't know. We haven't agreed on everything. We just got an argument. Yeah. That's true. Uh, I don't know. This I don't know. This is a good one. God, uh, Nemesis is the goddess of revenge. But you could say you could you you could <laughs> gender aside like revenge. Like, is there a vengeful rapper? <laughs> what like Eminem? like Hobson? Oh, he's Hobson. just mad that he's not bigger than he was. No, I was thinking like people that do diss tracks. Like, oh okay, that's like a diss track thing. So what? So like, who has the most diss tracks? <laughs> uh, the one that comes to mind is that Eminem Machine Gun Kelly thing. Um, and there was the Meek Mill Drake thing. Yeah, there was. Who gets in the most? Didn't beats? Joe Budden make like six diss tracks towards Drake, and Drake never responded? Yeah, dude, he's not worth Drake's time. He knows that too. Yeah. There you go. Joe Budden's Joe Budden is nemesis. <laughs> that <laughs> makes okay. Got to be Joe Budden is nemesis because he still he still talks his stuff like yeah. on his podcast and stuff. If we're going figures, like we use Diddy and all that. Yeah. yeah okay. This is what I said. Okay, I said this earlier. The goddess of the rainbow, messenger of the gods, Iris. Iris appears as a beautiful maiden with wings, carrying the symbolic staff of a herald like Hermes. When she's not running around delivering messages, she serves nectar to Zeus and Hera in the throne room on Olympus, which is not as exciting, but does let her rest her wings. Iris was a handmaid in Hera. She never got much attention in the old myths, but everyone was always happy to see her. Much like a rainbow, she would show up where you least expected her and then disappear quietly. Um, Ooh. Is that Frank Ocean? Is this Frank Ocean? That's Frank Ocean. That's Frank Ocean. That's Frank Ocean. That's Frank Ocean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I didn't think he'd be on this list. Gotta be. I'm happy. Gotta be. Cause he, I'm so happy. Yeah. He, I was trying to I was trying to figure out I wanted to say Frank Ocean because I can yeah. talk about Frank Ocean forever. He, everyone's happy to see him, but he's mysterious. Everyone like, yeah, dude. And he and he delivers nectars to yeah. Zeus and Hera, you know, he writes. Oh yeah, Beyond well, who are uh, He wrote for Beyonce, he was Kanye. on a feature for Beyonce, he, he did No Church in the thing. Wild. Yeah. He did that works. Everyone. Frank Ocean is Iris and Rainbow. Yeah. LGBTQ. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That word that's a double. It's like a double entendre. This thing. is a th- dude. I like that. That's too perfect. This is too. 
I hate agreeing. <laughs> but that's too oh, perfect. I hate agreeing. But that's <laughs> I also I can't deny it. This is the problem you get when you have two friends do a podcast. That's I guess. yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's some stuff that we vehemently will disagree on, but we haven't got there yet, I guess. Um, Hecate, I think it's, oh wait, Hecate, this has two pronunciations, okay, we'll say Hecate, goddess of magic, crossroads, and ghosts. Distinguishing features, Hecate is usually dressed in dark robes holding twin torches, She's accompanied by a she-dog and a pole cat, which used to be her enemies before she morphed them into animals. In later times, Hecate was pictured as a woman w- as a woman with three heads or three entirely different forms of for morning, noon, and night. Talk about split personalities. MF2. Hecate was a goddess to be feared. The Greeks and Romans respected her power but didn't usually worship her. She was the goddess of dark and unknown forces, yeah. and the fact that she had three different... Yeah, it's MF2. This is Doom. <laughs> this is really boring. Is it? It's boring when we agree. I don't think so because I think it's interesting to see how, like, you know, the, like how the gods all had all their like their own place in the theology, mm-hmm. kind of like how rappers and artists all have their place in. I mean, yeah, hip hop. Like everyone needs a niche, and not everyone can fill that same niche, you know. But there's only so many niches. Yeah. So and Doom is hecky. I'm glad we got Doom in. Shout out Doom. It's the top five. No, He's one of my favorite rappers. No, it's not that. boring. Just because we're agreeing, because we're putting, we're making those connections. You know how like, yeah, when the gods were made, and that theology was made. Like you know, the, you tell me that people aren't unique. There's only like twelve different kinds of people. Yeah, but but like how they get there is different though. To yeah, me, but yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Like it's the same thing. Like look at all these different niches we're finding here. Yeah. Like, Frank Ocean could not fit Zeus. No. MF Doom cannot fit anything else we've said this whole time. No, not at all. No, you see? So it works. It's just cool. But that's, that's them as an artist. Yeah, that's but it's just observing just how, like, like all these gods represent the different personality types, I think, in a yeah. way. It's, yeah, I mean, that's what they were made up for. Yeah, it's like the personality like they types. Were, like so they were made up for reasons. Yeah, so we have enough niches in hip-hop to fill the personality types. So it's, like, it's cool to categorize people in that way. Yeah. So I don't think true. it's boring at all. I guess not. But I don't like I don't like coming to these so fast and not arguing. Damn. <laughs> <sighs> Maybe we get Nick on the mic. Would Nick would Nick have some Nick, do you have any insight? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, okay. So the last one on this list is uh and I think probably for a time we're gonna do the last one. I I had a couple ideas, but this is probably for time. Yeah. I I wanted to say like Prometheus and Perseus, but I don't know. I always revisit this. Yeah, okay. We can always revisit this. All right. So Tyche is the goddess of good luck and fortune. Distinguishing features. Tyche can look just like Nemesis, her sister, which means you've got to be careful. Sometimes good luck good luck can look like bad luck and vice versa. Tyche usually holds a cornucopia, the horn of plenty, which is filled with nuts, berries, fruitcakes, bonbons, and all kinds of goodies, representing the fortunes she bestows on mankind. The horn of plenty has become a symbol of thanksgiving in America thanks to Tyche. She is also pictured with an orb, a ball which you can roll in any direction, just as a reminder that your good luck doesn't always roll your way. Who did we say? Who did you say her twin was? Huh? Who did you say her sister was? Nemesis is her sister. Yeah, Nemesis was... Uh, Nemesis was Joe Budden. Right. So... Is there a good comparison we made here? I don't know. People don't change. Back in the day, Greeks and Romans prayed for Tyke's favor at gambling contests and competition. Funny thing about Tyke, though, she hardly ever grow- shows up when you call. She prefers to, repri- to surprise you. Sadly, her sister Nemesis does, too. So it's like it's like fortune. It's just good luck. Who's <laughs> the artist there, of good luck? Is there something there? Because I can talk because, like, I think one I didn't think about but did cross my mind, like, was Prometheus, like, the god. Like, he gave fire to humans. And he's bas- he's basically, like... Jesus to Romans. So who's that then? Is but is that like the invention of hip hop? Maybe. But like the thing is he gave fire to humans, but he uh he disobeyed Zeus when he did that. So like has anyone like gone against Kanye and by giving something to people and then Kanye was like, Man, forget them. No, because he's all love. We got love, yo. We got love. 
<laughs> there's Perseus. There's Midas. Ooh, Midas is the Midas touch. The Midas touch. That's the recruitment. gold touch. That's, like that's like it's a producer thing. It's a producer. Okay, that's a producer thing. Or who's like on every time they're on track, it's gold. Like Kendrick. Yeah, that's like a goat thing. Yeah, Kendrick doesn't have bad features. No, I got one. Okay, you know who's Midas? Andre three thousand. Yes. <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Name a bad Andre three thousand feature. Huh? Name a bad Andre three thousand feature. You can't. No, you can't. You can't name a there, Andre three thousand has never had a bad no, song like, feature verse. No. He produces sometimes. Like even what he did on thirty hours. I was like, okay, this Fire. that's fine. I wasn't like upset. No. Midas Touch. If we're going to go Midas Touch, Young Thug again. Like every feature Ooh. he's on is fire. Young Thug does have the Midas Touch. You young. put my, you put Young Thug, you feature Young Thug in a song. It's like, okay. 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 Yeah. Nah. Dude, he was on Camila Cabello's song, Havana. It's like the song of the year. <laughs> young Thug was on that. I've never heard that song. I probably have, but I just don't know you that. You have definitely heard that song. Havana, I probably- oh, no, nah, no. Nah. Half of my heart is in Havana. Oh, no, nah, no. Nah. You've definitely oh, okay, heard okay, that. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. You've definitely heard that. Okay, I just didn't know what it was or what it was That's called. That's, like, actually the biggest song it's of the like year. If I've heard that song, you've heard that song. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay, whatever. Young Thug was on that song? Yeah. That's an infinite bag. <laughs> yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. But, yeah, but to me, it's Dre, because it's more, because that's more of a, I don't know, because if it's gold, it's very pronounced. Yeah. Drake does that for other things too. Like he does that in business, like with the headphones. Like beats are the biggest thing. No, 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 no. I meant Andre. When I said I said Dre, I was in Andre. My bad. Okay. Well, I'll say Dr. Dre. We said that though. I said that for Hephaestus. No, I didn't. I said that for Athena. That's true. Can't repeat. Okay. No. Are we you can't just say Dre. Dr. Dre owns that. Not to me. Well, I'll say stacks. I usually say stacks anyway. Yeah. I guess. No. I wanna I wanna argue with you. Oh, we'll but get we there. We also don't. We all, yeah, we will. Oh, we'll, we'll get there. We will. Don't worry. We'll do that. We'll we we'll do that if we ever do like this. Ever, if we ever do this again with like sports or something. Oh yeah, if we bring in, you know, we're gonna start having. You know, that's another thing about our podcast is we want to start bringing in artists um, around campus here at UCM. So, you know, if you are listening to this and if you want to be, <laughs> <laughs> Hulu, oh. <laughs> if you are, <laughs> hopefully you are. Um, if you are listening to this and you're a local artist and you want to be on the show, just let us know. Uh, hit us up on Twitter or Instagram. Uh, we'll have a Snapchat set up soon. Start using podcast. Yeah, we'll put all the we'll put all the personal information, all the um, official like our main page information. We'll put that in like the description. Yeah. And stuff when we upload this to SoundCloud and SoundCloud you- and YouTube. SoundCloud and YouTube. Okay. Yeah, cool. and we want to we want to hear from you guys. You know, we want your opinions and uh, yeah, tell us what to talk about too. I'll talk <laughs> about whatever. I don't care. Yeah, it doesn't have to be hip hop or you know sports related. I would prefer no. it to be, but <laughs> it can be anything. So yeah. yeah, if you're an art and if you're an artist on campus and hip hop's not your thing, like we still want you to be on the show. Yeah, for sure. You know, that's just kind of like you know, just for you know your opinion and um, the music you make, just to kind of promote it. So yeah, if you're interested in being on the show, let us know, and we'll you know probably bring this up again with when we have other people here. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's, uh, I think that'll be it. Then. Yeah, with that, I think we're gonna wrap up the podcast here. I'm Stephen Holstein again. Isaiah Killinger, Nick. I'm Nick Pretch. Nick Pretch. Uh-huh. I'm gonna get that name right eventually. I've said it four different times or four different ways. Oh, whatever. So all, all right. right. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys for listening. We hope you have a wonderful day and night. Uh, we'll see you next week. That's a wrap. Yeah, dude, we killed that last segment, I think. <laughs> Probably not. I hope so. Hey, guys, if you want to record, like, an alternate intro, you can just use the compiler, and I won't just sound like we have that bad. And just cut out the first bit. Because it was long enough. How long was it? About an hour and a half. I knew that would happen. The Mount Olympus thing was an hour and a half? I was having to stop. I knew that would happen. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be then. Just that? So we want to record an alternate... Hey, let me hear the beginning of it. Let me hear the beginning of the Mount Olympus thing.